itching. Mm, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Christine. How's everybody doing today? Um, I went to bed with my hair wet last night, so I like to say it has a little zhuzh. It doesn't. There's no zhuzh there. Um, I also have some sort of rash that came from the soccer field on Saturday morning. Uh, I don't mean to show you my grossness, but, well, didn't mean to show you my boob either, but do you see that? That little rash right there, that little spot of rash, it is so itchy. It is driving me crazy. Mm. So, anyway, I did not get to see any of the Met Gala last night, but I did get to see some of the looks. And I posted some of, oh, I'm so itchy. I posted some of my favorite looks on my Instagram stories last night. Um, I thought that Rihanna was the only person who listened to the theme. See, the thing about the Met Gala is it's always themed. You don't have to like the fashion at the Met Gala, but you gotta go with the theme. It's a th there's a theme, you can't fight the theme. Just like Leanne Rhyme said, you can't fight the moonlight, okay? Um, you can't fight the theme. The theme is what it is, right? So you are supposed to um, dress according to the theme. So many people get an invitation to the Met Gala and they don't dress the theme. They play it safe. They just want to dress up and look pretty. No, no. You are like the annoying adult who gets invited to a Halloween party and is the only person who doesn't dress up. That annoys me. Participate or don't show up. It drives me nuts. Rihanna killed it. Um, Zendaya looked amazing. Amazing. Um, who else looked really good last night? Uh, Lala. Ooh, was she showing mellow? <laughs> what he is missing now. Whoa. Um... Anyway, I, and, and I have to say, just from a holy crap girl, I wish I could pull off what you could pull off look, um, Bella Hadid, 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 Hadid. I don't know how you say her name because I'm not 20, but there's no, yeah, there's two sisters, Bella and Gigi. Bella Hadid, Hadid, I don't know how you pulled that outfit off, honey. I don't even know how it stayed on. It must have been glued. I don't need to know. It's fashion secrets. It was phenomenal. And like, listen, I'm a sucker for Selena Gomez and, and The Weeknd because I think they're super, super cute. But I feel like Bella Hadid called Michael Kors and was like, hey, so I just found out that my ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend were going to be at the Met Gala. And Michael Kors was like, hold my beer. This girl's outfit was so fly. So fly. I posted it on my Instagram stories. It was like a cat suit. It was open in the back. Her body was banging from every angle. I couldn't even, I couldn't look, but I couldn't look away. Oh, Katy Perry looked. Katy Perry's canceled. I canceled Katy Perry with her stupid, stupid self. She needs a nap. She needs to go away for a while. Um, Kendall Jenner, too. Good Lord. You know, it's easy to have that body when you're six feet tall. You have no kids. You know, you can work out all day, whatever. Ooh, the trench coat was fly, girl. I was like, let me. That's how, like, I want to walk into Michael's office and be like, you know, just a trench coat with nothing else. That was fly. But it wasn't on theme. This is my point. It was not on theme. I'm not giving you like a total like breakdown or whatever, but I'm just telling you, I appreciate people that, um, you know, pay attention to the theme. Blake Lively's gorgeous. Come on, stop it with herself. J-Lo and A-Rod, 
I don't know what Jennifer Lopez was wearing. It was not at all on theme. I can't remember the theme right now, but if you look at Rihanna, that was the theme. It was like, I don't even, Jungle Madonna was on theme, but I didn't really love what she was wearing, but she was on theme. The thing about the Met Gala is it is supposed to be inspired by eccentric fashion with a theme, right? Yeah, Katy Perry, stop trying to be Lady Gaga. Stop it. Meanwhile, Sarah Jessica Parker, it was the first time Sarah Jessica Parker did not come to the Met Gala since 2010. Are you kidding, Carrie Bradshaw? Get your ass up. I know you're tired. We're all tired. And go to the Met Gala. We wait for you. Carrie Bradshaw, go. Um, Come. Okay, I don't know what the theme was. People know. Um, but I'm just telling you, if you want to see what the theme should have been, look at Rihanna. She nailed it. If you want to see people who did not pay attention to the theme whatsoever, look at someone like Kate Hudson or Gwyneth Paltrow. Could not have been more boring. Pretty women, gorgeous, but boring for the Met Gala. Great for like the Grammys. Not so great for the Met Gala. All right, anyway, let's move on. So yesterday, we are at Charlie's soccer. Oh, the Olsen twins. Oh, let me not even. Let me not even. Because I don't... Ugh. Anyway. Um, so, um, what was I going to say? Oh, Maxwell's so fly. Could we not even? Maxwell is like, what? Maxwell, get into my lap and stay there. Um, so yesterday we're at Charlie's soccer game, right? And she, she does a goal kick and she kicks the ball all the way to the other side of the field. She's a good kicker. And one of her teammates kicks the um, ball into the goal. So they get their first goal. Everybody's cheering. Amazing. Great job, Charlie. Great job, Grace. Great job, blah, blah, blah. Charlie's like, great job. I didn't score. I'm like, yeah, but you helped. That's how it works. Team sport. You kicked the ball. She kicked it in the goal, right? So um, not five minutes later, Charlie kicks the ball and her teammate kicks the ball into the goal. Everybody starts cheering, whatever, and... Um, Charlie stomps away, stomps down the field. Uh, 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 uh. And I'm like, what is your problem? She's like, I didn't score that. I'm like, I understand that. Again, team sport. It's called an assist. You kicked it and set your friend up to be able to score. And she was like, so five minutes goes by. And I see Charlie like not passing the ball. She like doesn't want to pass the ball. So finally I'm like, Charlie, pass the ball. So she passes the ball and her little, a different friend kicks it in the goal. This time Charlie stomps off the field. She's done. She tells her coach, I need a break. Long story short, we play the game. After the game, we're walking to the car. And Max and Olivia walk ahead with Michael. And I'm like, hey, Nugget, come here. So I'm like, what's going on with you? She's like, I, I, uh, I don't want to be the person who assists. I don't want to be the assister. I want to be the scorer. And I said, I understand that. And many times you are the scorer. But sometimes you got to be the assister. She's like, no, mm -mm, no, I never want to be the assister. I always want to be the scorer. I, I don't need to be the assister. I, I don't want to assist. I just want to only score. So I said, well, first of all, I appreciate at six and a half your honesty. Okay, because most of us in life, most of us adults can't even be that honest. We carry around resentment towards people who are winning around us, even though they're winning with our help and couldn't win without us, but we feel resentful because they get all the glory. And we want some of the glory sometimes. We wanna be the winners 
sometimes. We don't always want to be the ones helping others achieve their goals and their dreams, even if they can't do it without us. It's a very brave thing. I don't love it because I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be that spirited. I don't want her to have that as her spirit, okay, in her heart. But I do understand. She was like, listen, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I said to her, do you understand how important it is to be the person who sets somebody else up to win? Like sometimes we need to step in as the assisters. Sometimes we need in life to step in and say, this is not going to be about me. This is going to be about her or about him. This is going to be about somebody else. So I'm going to do my part and they're going to get all the glory. They're going to get the win. She was like, no, mm -mm. I, this is not how I want to work. So I said to her, listen, there are adults, people mommy's age, even mommy sometimes, right? Um, when I work so hard and somebody else gets the glory. It is, it is hard for me. Um, it is hard to put everything that you have out for someone else to move on, for someone else to move forward. Think about how many times we foster relationships, romantic relationships, where we build men up. We make them healthy. We help them achieve their goals and then they move on to the next girl. And then we realize like we did our part, right? We did our part and they weren't meant for us. And when the resentment passes and the anger fades and the sadness dissipates, we look at the situation and we go, okay, I did my part. I'm not angry anymore. Like good for him, good for her, move on, do whatever. But it is not always easy to be the one to put the work in and not get the score. That I'll tell you right now. Sometimes it is hard to be the one putting the work in and not get the score. Putting the work into the man and not getting the ring. Putting the work into whatever and not reaping the whatever. God, I get it. I get it. And I'm, I'm making the correlation because when you're six, it's the soccer field, right? But when you're 40, it's the marriage. It's the friendship. It's all of that, right? So, I, Donna, Dina, Deanna, I can't read. Um, you will be angry at first, but it, you won't stay angry forever. I promise you. I promise you. And this is what I told Charlie yesterday. I, under, I love the fact that you can admit you want to win all the time. You only want to be the one to win. But life, life, not soccer, life is a team sport. And it can't always be about you. I know you don't understand that at six. Some of us don't understand that at 40. But it can't always be about you. Sometimes you're doing the work because someone else needs that win and they would never get it without you. I want you guys to remember that. We have been called to truly love and lift each other, even when it hurts us. And sometimes you are called to put the work in so someone else can win because they can't do it without you. And I understand that sometimes that hurts, but we don't always understand why we're called, right? We don't always understand why we're called to do certain things. But I know that life is not always about us. I know that it's not because I lived a life that was only for me for so long. For so long. By the way, by the way. Remind me tomorrow, I need to tell y'all about this girl who tried to come for me. I was like, girlfriend, are you really coming at me for shit I did 17 years ago? I love you. You want to paint a picture of me? You better get a new 
brush. Your paints are stale. Your breath stinks. Your brushes are crusty. You're going to try to come out here like, you don't know what she did when she was 17. I will tell y'all every single thing I did 20 years ago. We could sit on Coffee Talk for five hours together and I will run down a list of every shitty mistake and thing I did to hurt other people because I have no secrets from you. They think I have secrets because I haven't told you. But the, some of the things I don't tell you are only because it is not my story to tell. There are other people involved and I'm not interested in hurting other people because that's not who I am. But just so you know, there are some sketchy people out here trying to paint us with dirty ass old crusty brushes. Whew, you better get some new brushes there, paint woman. Because I'm not the one, just in case you were wondering. But they love that, don't they? They think they have something on you. Girl, I found out what you did to your sister. Girl, first of all, what I did to my sister ain't none of your damn business. And my sister will tell you that too. Second of all, that shit was 20 years ago. But if you want to do it, we can do it. Okay. I will read somebody quick, Aisha. Quick. Quick. And my hair will come up. My earrings will come off. And I will read you so quick. You wouldn't even have time. You won't even have time to ask the Lord for guidance. It won't even be. You won't even have time to come out of your mouth. Not my fault. Not my fault. It's a gift. Okay. That's why Bravo had me on the wrong show. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right. So I love you guys so much today. I love you. And uh, I thank God for you. And I am so proud of you. And um, oh, God bless you. God bless you. Um, hold on one second. Oh, how about those wrinkles? Ooh. Um, okay, somebody just wrote, why were you dissing those women earlier? I'm assuming she's referring to the Met Gala. Sweetheart, I wasn't dissing them. They all looked gorgeous. They just were not on theme. So it's like when you have a Halloween party and you ask everybody to dress up and two of your friends show up looking beautiful but not in costume. It ruins the theme. Um, but I wasn't dissing anybody. They all looked gorgeous um, while I sat in my pajamas with my wet hair. So there's that. Um, okay. Oh, Kate Rogers. I'm so glad you're here. All right. I love you guys so much today. To everybody who bought a State of Style um, pendant yesterday, thank you for that. 40% off. I love that. I, that didn't come from me. That came from my partner. Um, I'm going to check out my rash because it's itchy. And um, I will see you guys on the flip side. Have a great day.